At this election on May 18th, you are going to be handed a how to vote card from the major political parties, independents and minor parties. It is going to be your decision how you cast your vote. I am sick to death of people saying, where are my preferences going? I want you to watch this video clip and understand the preferential voting system. So, you've always wanted to know how someone gets elected to the House of Representatives. Well, in the next few minutes, all will be revealed. Let's say we have four candidates in your electorate. Your favourite is Maria, who gets your number one vote. You also have to give the other candidates a number in the order you prefer them, because you have to number all the boxes on the ballot paper for your vote to count. Let's say there were 62,000 votes cast in your electorate. If 2,000 of those weren't completed properly, they're called informal votes by the way, then that leaves 60,000 formal votes to be counted by the Australian Electoral Commission. Now let's look at how the vote went. Lee got 23,000 votes, Maria got 22,000, Andrew got 10,000, and only 5,000 voted for Alexandra. Lee got the most votes, and in some countries, that means he would be elected. But in Australia, a candidate needs to get more than half of the total formal vote. So with 60,000 votes, the successful candidate must get more than 30,000 votes. This is called an absolute majority. As you can see, no one has more than 30,000 votes. So what happens now? Because Alexandra got the least votes, she is excluded. There she goes. But Alexandra's votes aren't wasted. If you voted for Alexandra and put Lee second, your vote now goes to Lee. Others had Maria as their second favourite, so their vote goes to Maria. Like this. And others had Andrew as their number two, so their vote goes to Andrew. You get the idea, right? It goes on until all Alexandra's votes are distributed to other candidates. And now, do we have a successful candidate? Let's see. No, not yet. Still, no one has more than half the vote. So the same process is continued. Whoever has the least votes is excluded. See you later, Andrew. Andrew's votes are now distributed. If you voted for Andrew and had Maria as number two, now she gets your vote. This person had Lee as their number two, so Lee gets their vote. This person had Alexandra as number two, but Alexandra has been excluded. Hmm, tricky, eh? No, not really. The Australian Electoral Commission will look at the number three choice, which is Maria, so she gets the vote. Easy. This goes on until all 12,500 of Andrew's votes are distributed. Now back to the race. Has someone now got more than half the vote? Drum roll, please. Well done, Maria. With 30,100 votes, you are elected to the House of Representatives. In a real election, this process can sometimes take a little longer because the Australian Electoral Commission has to wait to count the votes that come through the post. And, to be sure there are no mistakes, all votes have to be counted twice. So there you have it. Now you know how candidates get elected to the House of Representatives. I hope you found that informative. And don't blame me if you want to put the majors ahead of the minor parties or independents. That's your choice. I suggest take a pen into the ballot box as well and not use the pencils. And another thing, if you found it informative, then share it with your friends, your family and those on Facebook. Every Australian should be informed on how the voting system really works.